At Kids Zone in Greater Manchester, calls from eager parents have been coming in for months. But here there are concerns about the amount that will be paid for the funded hours. Inflation's like up here and the rates down here. So we've got a big gap on, on the rates for what we're actually going to be receiving. Um, so no, I would say it's not enough for us to be able to maintain the quality that we need to maintain. The government is confident this rollout will be a success. What we're doing is working closely on a monthly basis with local authorities to make sure that each local authority has the number of places it needs to be able to deliver this new offer. Parents from today can apply for the first 15 hours for their two-year-olds and we're supporting local authorities to make sure they've got the money and the people needed to be able to give this to parents. Over the last year, the number of childcare places has fallen and councils are keeping a close eye. What we're all doing in local government is working really, really closely with providers to make sure that we can get the best service that we actually can. But it goes back to one of our original asks was about having more control at a local level so that we can actually direct providers to set up where they're needed, not where they think they would like to go um, and we're still calling on, on government for those extra powers to be able to do that. Thank you for the little There are three months to go before the rollout begins, a help for many working parents but a real challenge for an already stretched sector. Vanessa Clark, BBC News. Well joining us now is Neil Leach from the Early Years uh, Alliance. Uh, Neil, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, it's a really big issue, isn't it, for so many parents across the country. Um, how big? Obviously this only applies to England, parents in England, but what kind of a difference is this new, gonna, uh, this new scheme going to make? Well I think in theory it would make a fantastic difference. I mean, regrettably we have some of the most expensive childcare and education in the world, so parents desperately desperately need help but the reality as your report has just alluded to basically is that we don't have the infrastructure to support that we have seen record closures so at a very point in time when government is looking to expand this particular offer we're seeing nurs nurseries childminders preschools go by the wayside and we have a recruitment and retention crisis that we frankly have never witnessed before it's, it's all good saying that you know we like operators to move into the right areas but they have to be financially viable and when you see the level of closures that we've seen clearly that is not the case and it's Neil just take tough. just take us through why there are these closures and I think the issue is particularly with childminders isn't it that so many have have left the sector within the last few years I'm sorry I can just about hear you but the reality is I think you said that the main issue is with childminders but the reality is that actually it's every type of setting that is closing. I mean, the BBC themselves just a, a few days ago announced that in Suffolk, for example, one of the larger providers had closed its doors. We ourselves, we're a charitable organisation, so we're not for profit. As well as representing 14,000 members in England, we also operate 42 settings exclusively in areas of deprivation. This time four years ago, we operated 132. We've closed 90 of those settings. If it's so financially viable, if it's so good for parents, then you have to have an infrastructure in place, and that we do not have at this particular point in time. So what does the sector need, Neil? It needs funding. It needs adequate funding. It needs somebody to take it seriously. At the moment, the, the way in which we view, dare I say, early years, is we see it as basically an, a, a, a method, a mechanism for predominantly mums to go back to work. We don't see it as part of the education system. And if we did, perhaps we would pay our people more. Perhaps we would value them more. Perhaps we would understand the importance of the early years sector. So it needs somebody, dare I say, in government with a bit of a backbone to say, let's invest in the early years because these are the children that basically will ensure that we have a planet to live on in 200 years time it needs investment it needs serious thought and it needs focus uh, the government would of course the department of education do say that they are providing the single biggest investment uh, in childcare in england's history so they would counter that they aren't putting the funding in um, let's say from a parent's perspective if they are able to find a child care provider this is a crucial time isn't it because now is the time when it's parents of two-year-olds working parents of two-year-olds can apply for this government-funded child care isn't it 
It is. Uh, I mean, we're already struggling, though. I come back to this point to, to cope with three and four year olds, never mind an additional batch of two year olds. As the program gets rolled out further and further, I, I, frankly, I think the challenges will become even greater. So I come back to this point that unless we invest, unless we have a strong infrastructure, there's no point in making you know, headline announcements and then thinking about how you're going to deliver it later. It is interesting that when this announcement was made, there was not a single discussion with the sector. If you were in business and you made the biggest investment, as government claims it's made, in early years, but you made it in production and you hadn't talked to your production director, you hadn't talked to your sales director, you'd be thought of being stupid, basically. But somehow, for the early years, this is acceptable. So parents watching this morning might be a little bit confused because they might see this as being good news that they're going to get a um, you know, reduction in their childcare costs, but you're saying you may not be able to find the places because the childcare providers simply aren't able to continue. Is that a fair assessment of what you're saying? That's a fair assessment. It, it's great on paper, but in practice, if you can't find a place, it's no benefit whatsoever to you as an individual. And frankly, parents need that at this point in time. They need support. They need more support than ever. Neil Leach, thank you. Neil Leach from the Early Years Alliance, thank you.